Welcome back to Detown TV, the free show for DSLR shooters. My name is RC, and I'm joined again by Mr. Scott Kelby. What's going on, Howdy. Scott? How are you? I'm very good, sir. Good, good, good. Hey, listen, let's just jump right down to it. You're probably watching this. If you're going to be watching this, you're going to be watching this at kelbytv.com forward slash on air. Hey, guys, every couple of weeks we do this live. We put this up so that you guys can just kind of get a taste of what's happening, right? We know that there's a lot of faithful watchers out there that want to watch this and interact live. KelbyTV.com forward slash on, on air, air is the place yeah. for you to do that. So make sure that you're tuning into that. Let's get this out of the way. Peach Pit has a book deal that we want you to take a look at as well. PeachPit.com forward slash KelbyTV. You want to enter the code KelbyTV. The deal ends August 31st and you can get 40% off of this one book, the Canon 5D Mark III from Snapshots to Great Shots by Barion X Pirello. Barion X Pirello. That's right. Great, great interviewer, great, great guy. He is and a good he's guy. He's got like a really him. good book on it's the new Canon. Good. Very good photographer. Now, while we're on that, let's also talk about the fact that Lindsay Adler is actually is having a pre-con at Photoshop World that right. I think is going to be off the chain. Yeah, the day before Photoshop World, so Lindsay's going to have this pre-conference session, so it's an intensive, and it's on shooting engagements, mm -hmm. but with a fashion flair, which is kind of what the market wants right now. And she's really, really, really good at it. She's a tremendous teacher. She's great at lighting. She's great at posing. She's just, she's just great. So if you're going to Photoshop World, or you're, you want an excuse to go to Photoshop World, uh, it's coming up, uh, Photoshop World's coming up here at the beginning of next month, beginning of September, but uh, make sure you check out her class because she's a very, very great teacher, and it's a, you know, they're small class. I think that's- There it is. Yeah, there it is. Fashion I mean, she just has, engagement session. She just has a phenomenal look to the stuff that she does. Oh, look at this. This is something else we haven't even talked about. That's right, Vincent Lafre. So if you ever want to learn video from the man himself, Vincent Lafre? Yeah, from probably the most famous DSLR <laughs> filmmaker, right? That's where it's at. So you want to take and a look at that stuff. Sponsored by Canon. Sponsored by Canon. Make sure you go and you take a look at this. Guys, I can't think of a better reason for you to go than to watch the world's best instructors to talk to you about Photoshop, photography, lighting, all of that stuff is right here at photoshopworld.com, 5th through the 7th at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in, in Las Vegas. Vegas. Do you need a legitimate reason to go to Vegas? This is one. Yeah. <laughs> if there's ever a reason, this is the one. Now, yes, we were talking we about Lindsay. Yeah. Here's a quick tip from her sample. Wow, Take a well, look at what go. she's got. If you're photographing a woman, um, or men as well, if you really want to emphasize their eyes, one tip that I give is I often have people bring their eyes closest to the camera. Same thing we've been talking about. So let me take a shot, just plain, just close up of her, of her head. Okay, good. But now I want to make it so that the closest thing to the camera is her eyes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit you in this chair and I'm gonna have you look up at me. So take a seat, lean forward, good, and look up at me. So in this instance, so if you compare the shots, if you compare before, it's kind of all evenly emphasized. But in this instance, I'm closest thing I'm doing when I'm shooting kind of down on her like this is I'm bringing the eyes to the camera. So they look big, they look beautiful. See how it really emphasizes the eyes compared to before? So there's before. And there, so the biggest thing is going to be your eyes. So that's what I try to do. A lot of times if I'm out on location, I sit the subject on the ground. I'll photograph them like this because their eyes are going to be big and beautiful as they look up at me. So I hope you found some useful tips on how to pose models to emphasize the parts of the body you want to emphasize and how to use your angles, whether you're sitting down, standing up, to make someone look taller, more slender, and really more flattering. This has been Lindsay Adler for D-Town TV. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm, just, I'm sorry, I'm just emphasizing. <laughs> We're just emphasizing. We're right. shebanging. We're shebanging. So, <laughs> anyway, if you don't know what shebang stuff is, you'll, you will soon enough. You will soon enough. Um, thank you very much, Lindsay, for most of that stuff. If you want to take a look at the stuff that she's doing, this is going to be the place to do it. Make sure you take a look. Photoshopworld.com. You are going to be so upset with yourself if you miss it. Yeah, I sat in her class at the Google Plus conference. She had five different lighting looks for fashion, like fresh lighting looks, mm -hmm. and, and she was terrific. You're very, very good. I was, I was sitting out in the audience, and I'm just like, dang, she's good. Yeah. She's very That's good. great work. Now, hey, listen, uh, so you want to talk about lenses, because last week we talked a little bit about sports photography because sports season. Yeah, it was settings, and, yeah. And things like that. Football but, season. So one part is the camera, right? It's all of the stuff that you're doing on the camera side right. of things. Now, what about, what about the lenses? What do okay. I do? Okay, so with the lenses, we, we, you're kind of stuck with the lenses that you have unless you've got just a crazy budget. And, and unfortunately, the longer the lens, it seems like the, the more expensive the lens. Okay. So there's a couple things you can do. You know, Canon's got a very nice 70 to 200 
F4. And if you're shooting nothing but day games, if like you know you're going to be mostly shooting your kids or shooting uh, pl playing every day at four o'clock or whatever, uh, that's a terrific lens because the price is right. But if you go from an, an F4 lens down one stop to an f2.8, the price like almost triples. So it, it does help if you uh, if you can shoot in the day. It makes it much, much easier. But, right, right. So rather than saying, hey, go out and spend $2,400 on a lens, here's what I would recommend. One of the most useful things you can do for daylight photography is to get a tele-extender. All right. Okay. This is relatively inexpensive. There are probably 150 to 200 bucks. Well, depending on what brand you get and stuff. Right, right, right. Uh, but it's more in the $200 range. And what this does is it effectively adds 1.4 magnification to your lens, but you don't lose any quality. The one thing that you do lose is one stop of light. So if you have an f 2.8 lens, and you add this, it does it does make your 200 millimeter lens almost a 300 millimeter lens. Right. Just by any so it takes your existing lens and turns it into a longer lens. Mm -hmm. I like the way it makes a noise when I shake it. Yeah. So, um, but it it. You but it do, adds a stop. You'll go from f 2.8 back to f 4. That's why in the day it really doesn't matter. At right, the right. daytime shooting, this is a, an ideal thing. Now I'll use it at night too, but then I have to crank up my ISO because I'm, I lose an entire stop. At night, I'm worried about it. And I talked about that on the last show. In right. the daytime, this is a wonderful way to do it. So a couple other little tips. So what if it's a really important game? What if it's the championship game? What if it's the end of the season? <laughs> do what I've done on numerous occasions. Go to lensprotogo.com. They actually rent lenses. And you can rent 400 millimeters, 300 millimeters, whatever you want. You can rent it. And they ship it overnight. You get the lens. You use it. And what I always try to do is I try to plan a couple of different things around that lens. Like, well, I want to shoot birds. I want to shoot. I try to, you know, mm -hmm. maximize it. There, there. Lens Pro to go. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I, I've used them numerous times. They're they're terrific and they're very very quick. I'm really. going to give a, I'm gonna do a quick side testimony on that stuff because it's one of those things. I don't know if you guys have ever rented a 400 lens or a 300 lens. Sometimes I think people don't do that because they're kind of afraid of what that looks like or how to work with it or it, it's a big monstrosity if you've never worked with a 400 or a 300 or any of that stuff it can be a little disconcerting you're like i don't know what i'm going to be able to do with it these guys when you call them up they're actually really good about talking you through a lot of the things like if you have a question where do i put you know how do i mount it how do i hold it is it pretty like any questions that you would have on ordering any specialty type lens Hey, I'll answer a few really, of those really because good. I don't want you to freak out and think, well, but, if I order. Yeah, talk so, about it here. So if you get a 400 millimeter lens, there's nothing to it. There's no, there's not any controls on it. It's just a 400 millimeter lens. Okay. However, it will have a collar on it and you want to, you want to mount your monopod because here's the thing, a 400, this is a 200. Okay. So imagine doubling the size of this and doubling the thickness and trying to shoot like this. I've seen guys do it. But you are going to really want to use a monopod, and you'll see everybody on the sidelines using a monopod. So number one, so it holds the camera, the lens still, mm -hmm. but also it just takes the weight off, and you'll, you'll get better photographs if you're not having to worry about trying to balance this giant lens. So you're going to mount it, the lens actually on the monopod, Why on the monopod, not your camera. It puts too much weight on the. You don't want this thing to snap off. So they actually, you take the monopod goes on the lens itself. Okay. That's number one. Number two is how you steady the lens because you will actually see a lot of photographers out there with their hand laying on the lens. Normally you would never do that, but with a long lens at the very, very end, there's a spot where you can put your hand. And in fact, on some of the longer lenses, uh, like the 300, and I'm not even, I can't swear that the 400 because I don't use that for baseball, but for baseball, there's actually a, a little memory button. All right, so the memory button will let you do this. So just let's say we're shooting baseball. I will focus on home plate. Well, actually, I wouldn't start on home plate. I would start on second base. You actually focus on the base itself. You focus right in on it, and then you hit memory lock. So now what I'm doing is I'm shooting the batter. The batter takes off. The play's at second base. I can go over, and then my hand is on the barrel. They actually put focus buttons on the end of the barrel. So you can go like this, ka-chow, and, it, focus, and, it, and it, it locks it back in. So that way you're not trying, because there's no way you're going to focus here, turn in a split second and focus there. Oh. So what you do is you focus here, and then your hand's on the button, and you go bang, and it's right on second base. So that way you catch the slide, you catch all the action, without waiting for your camera to go zzzz, because you'll, you'll miss a lot of the action. So 
that is on some of the bigger lenses. I actually you know, did like, not know that. That's yeah, right. Yeah, on the like, 300. Yeah. If you take a look, so cool. look on the side of a 300, you'll see a thing that says memory lock. And that's what it's for. And then, RC, you'll see buttons all the way around because they don't know where your hands are going to be in the end. Right, right, right. But to stabilize it, that's what you do. Is you huh. put your hand down here, and it just kind of keeps it stable. Because you got to realize it's, it's going to be this long, literally. Right. So your hand, when you're shooting, your hand is going to be out here like this. And that button's there. Have a button here, a button here, a button here. The button's all the way around to lock that second focus. I don't use it in football at all, but in baseball, I use it all night long. Nice. Nice. Very, very cool. So I'm there's just a couple a things. Shot. So get a tele extender. It's the cheapest way to get the length that you need. Because you know what you know what would be the most frustrating thing about shooting your kids' sports is that they're always far away. That it always and if you don't get in tight, you're basically getting the same look as everybody would in the stands, right? If you don't get in close, if you're just if the first row of the stands is there and you're standing on the sideline right here, how much better is your photo going to look on the sidelines than it did sitting in the in the audience or in the stands? So Getting in close is what's going to make the photos look exciting. So it really is important to, to get in really, really tight. And so the longer your lens, the tighter in you'll be. Right, I just, I'm just going to bring this up just because I think it makes a good point for you to notice that a lot of the stuff that you're doing inside of sports, a lot of it has to do about being in very, very close. Oh, yeah. And you don't walk this. This is a lens. So a lot of, a lot of these moments, a lot of the things that you're going to see, be it, you know, be it Major League Baseball, be it high school baseball. A lot of that stuff is all about getting in really, really, really close. Hey, can I share a tip that Dave Black gave me? Sure. So Dave Black gave me a tip. He actually gave me a challenge, and, and, it, and I do it every game now. For the first series in football, he's like, you've got to get in there tight and get that picture of the quarterback with the ball right by his ear. Get that one where you see his hands, and it's right there. And I'm like, well, I'm using a 400, and you know, I would have to crop. Believe it or not, you'd still have to crop way in because you know, the quarterback's 30-something yards away from you, and you're on the NFL sidelines, you've got a, a dotted line for the video, mm -hmm. then a dotted line for you, so you're probably 40-something yards back. And to get, you think with a 400, you'd be right on top of them. Dave said, for the first series, use this. Use a tele extender. So I'm, I'm, I'm at 550 millimeter. Mm -hmm. So it's a 400 with a tele extender. Can you Ooh. scroll to my football uh, port real quick? Yeah. Just click on football and I'll show you what the shot looks like when you get it. Keep, scroll to the, yeah, that way. Keep going. Keep going. Right there. Eli Manning last year. Um, that's what it takes to get in there is 550 millimeter to get that close. And that's not really as close as I think Dave wanted, right? I think Dave would have said, 600 would have been perfect. You got to 550. But I was able to get that close without having to use a 600. And the nice thing about it is, once I do the first series of both quarterbacks and I get a shot like that, then I take this off. So it's really just for, they go to one series, I run the other field, I get one series of the other quarterback. Right. You know, and hopefully they pass them if they hand off four times and I have to do two series. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of the day, if you want to do this stuff, right, obviously like if you do a sports photographer, this is all part for the course for you. But if you want to try this on your own games, like home games and things like that, this is where you want to go. Take a look right at Lens Pro to go find specialty lenses, find telephoto lenses. You can get any type of lens that they you need. They got it need. all. Yeah, dude. So that's the place to be to do it. Rent it. You'll be happy that you did for your photography. Let's go ahead and take a quick break. When we come back, I've got a couple of tips on how to be able to stabilize your camera when you're shooting, as well as Mr. Peter Early, the man shebang himself. Shebang. Take a look. Shebang. The best way to describe my philosophy is that I don't use light to light my models. I use light to paint my models. My name is Frank Doroff and join me on Kelby Training for my new classes on being creative and getting the shot. So in these classes I'm not going to show you only about techniques. I'm going to show you how to use the light meter, how to meter several scenes. But what I'm going to show you more is how to create interesting images and how to make the most of your locations. I'm Frank Doerhoff. Check me out on kelbytraining.com for my new classes. We're back to D-Town TV, the free show for DSLR shooters. My name is RC, I'm here with Scott Kelby, and all of this stuff is brought to you by Kelby Training. Now, you were just talking about a lot of the football stuff. Yep. You actually did a class with Dave Black yeah. on football stuff. On shooting high school football. Right. So, because, 
that's the, it's, it's so challenging. You're under horrible lights. And by the way, we went to a we shot it at a real high school football game under really horrible lights. But Dave is just brilliant. He is just so Dave was teaching the class. I was kind of there just as like, you know, kind of like I'd go with Jay Mazel to ask questions and be mm -hmm. there. So it was it's really I don't want to make it sound like I'm teaching the class. Dave is teaching the class. I'm there with Dave as kind of as your um, surrogate. Right. It's not the right word, co-host. Uh, a prompter. A uh, prompter, thank a you. Host, a, a host. A facilitator. Guy, a guy with a camera. So, but, but Dave's fantastic. Uh, I don't know if they showed the promo for that thing, but it's, it's, it's amazing. It's a great, great promo. And the classes, I can't tell you the, the feedback we've gotten on that class. I see it in, on Twitter all the time. Well, because I think that what happens with this stuff is, is, like, you're talking about a lot of the NFL stuff. Well, you do that now for work. You are a sports shooter now for work, in addition to everything else. But there's people that are out there that are going, well, how does that apply to me with high school? How does that apply with me, with my kid in youth sports? How, what kinds of tricks can I learn from there? This is the class oh, that yeah. was made for you. Because guess what, guys? It's all sports. And it's all about getting great moments. It doesn't have to be an NFL person. You can do this right inside of your high right. school. Right, and, and this thing is really great for any night sport or indoor door sport. And he really, uh, he is such a, a wealth of knowledge. And I just, I just talked to Dave uh, yesterday, actually, just texting back and forth. And like here he is, you know, he's, he's shooting four Broncos games. Uh, towards the end of the season this year, but he shot for every big magazine. He's constantly shooting for people like Sports Illustrated, and he he's, he brings that depth of knowledge down to you being able to shoot your kids' indoor basketball game. It's 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 a phenomenal class. So if you're thinking, well, I'm not going to shoot high school football, I guarantee you, if you don't shoot any sports at all, you will learn some things about photography from Dave in that class. So make sure you take a look at it, KelbyTraining.com. That's the spot for you to go. Now, uh, I just wanted to cover a couple of basic things, a couple of things that have been interesting to me, and I figured I'd get them out of the way. The first thing is I found myself really into this, and I kind of just wanted to point it out. I hadn't talked about it. I do a lot of printing, and you'll notice that this is a it's, a, it's kind of a glossy paper, and I just got it recently. I didn't think I was going to dig it, as much as I do, and now I, I actually kind of love it. Metallic paper, dude. Dude, I was like, where have I been? The first time I had MPix print a, like a, a metallic sheet for me, I about blacked out. So this like, is, but this is coming out of your local printer here, right? This is, this is coming is out of, uh, yeah, this is coming out of the Epson printer. This is uh, out of the 3880, and I'm using Red River paper. Oh, I like Red River. Right. I use some of their paper, yeah. So, uh, so take a look at this. So if you want to take a look at more of their paper, redrivercatalog.com, this is a good one. What I'm using here is their... I'm using their Polar Pearl Metallic. It's this one, the 66 pound Polar Pearl Metallic. I like these guys quite a bit. It, it makes a really interesting shot. Dude, go to the 68 pound, do the 68. Mm. I mean, you don't have to actually look at it, but go to- the Ultra Pro Set. Yeah, go to the 68 pound. Because you know what, one of the things about, about paper, it, it, I mean, is not, not that you just hold it in your hand, but mm -hmm. there's a, a tactile feel to it. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, when you go to the heavier paper, people like it better. Mm -hmm. So. Heavier weight papers are better. Don't scrimp on the paper, RC. <laughs> you get the heavy but stuff. The metallic, Don't scrimp. I'm like, this stuff is cool. No, I love metallic. I love, yeah. love metallic. And now, it's not for every photo. No, no, But no, for no. things that have a lot of texture or, you know, anything. Like here you've shot the, uh, a car, right? And mm -hmm. That was in the NASCAR Museum? Yeah. And yeah, you yeah. think I don't follow you on Google Plus? I know you. I do, I yes. I see all of your <laughs> posts and I just mock them. <laughs> what is RC doing at the NASCAR Museum? Here's a guy that can't even spell NASCAR. He hates I can racing. You he are. hates it. He hates it. Hates racing. Hates racing. <laughs> hates it with a passion. Now, the other thing that I wanted to talk about, I, one of the things that I got in Charlotte was people asking about just techniques when I talk about camera craft. I was, did you see Ken Tony? What? Yes, I did. Hi, I did. Ken, Ken Tony and his clan were there. All right. Really, really good. He's a good guy. Now, I like Ken Tony. Now, uh, basically what we were talking about is stabilization Wait, for Wait, RC. Yes, sir. Look at the end of that lens. What I you, know. What are those buttons look, for? Look at this. There it is. All right. Okay, so this is just uh, tech, uh, you know, nerd out here. Uh, Sony Alpha 77. So that's this camera right here. Alpha 77. And this is a 7200 2.8. Button, button. And then there's a button right there on the what bottom of that lens. What are those buttons for? Those are for focus, Scott. Yes, there we go. <laughs> I'm like, wow, look at that. I can just kind of knock it out there. Now. Well, uh, when people were talking to me, they were talking about camera craft work and things that you can do to be able to steady yourself. So there's actually a couple of very basic things that you can do for that. Now, the first, when you hold your camera, a lot of the times you don't want to do this. Mm -mm. There's only one instance, which you just talked about. 400 millimeter. 400 millimeter, that's what you're doing. But you're never really doing this, mm -mm. right? I, never, I don't know which camera to look at because they're all kind of just both. They're all here. lit. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what's going on? Is it this one? Yeah, okay, I'm gonna look at you guys. So don't do this. 
mm -hmm. right? Do this. Yes. Put your hand right here, mm -hmm. put your hand under, that's gonna be one way to do it. The second thing that you wanna do is, I'm gonna need a little wider shot here. Don't shoot out here. There's a lot of the times people do this when they're shooting, right? Don't bring these in, always in, tight, nice and tight. And so what Camera helps up. is, now, you know what helps is, to, is right before you shoot is to, because you'll be doing this a lot, is to limber up. So what I recommend is right before you shoot, when you're holding your camera, do this, this, and then just do this a bit. Like the this. chicken wand. <laughs> I'm just, what? I'm getting you off track there. Sorry, that, that poor wand's going. I I'm can't like, believe he really just did limber. that. Really limber. All right, so here. Out, in. There you go. Tuck it tight. That right there. I want to keep it nice and tight, nice and tight, and you want all of that weight to be supported there. What happens, and one of the things that unfortunately I'm noticing is that I've been shooting a little winged out a little bit, and what that does is it makes me force myself to hold it here, yeah. and I've been having really, really bad, almost kind of like uh, tendonitis, tendonitis yeah. in my arms, but I would solve a lot of that stuff if I really got back to good craft and just kind of focus on doing this. The last thing that I usually tell people, can I pretend you're a wall real sure. quick? So, the last thing is if you want to grab something, if you find some sort of stabilization surface, just lean up against it. Lean up against it, put your hand difference. up, and you'll be surprised how just those small techniques, small camera craft work, can get your images looking a lot better. You know, the first two things that you just showed, proper lens holding technique and tucking your arms in, those two alone, because you know what, I, I do see, I, the other day I saw someone, they weren't addressing me, but I saw it on like G Plus, mm -hmm. saying, I just can't get my, my cameras, my, my shots, do I need to buy a new lens, do I need to buy these things and all, and it's like, it mostly when, I, when you dig through those and find out what it is, it's bad camera technique. Yeah, it's one of those things I have to go back and start working with it more and more, and unfortunately, I went back to work on it because of like an actual paint. You know what to do, right? The wing. Yeah, it works and then it out. You duck down low. Let's go ahead and take a look at Mr. Peter Hurley. Let's take a look at this one. Shabang! Hey, everybody, I'm here on the D Town set with Peter Hurley, headshot photographer, portrait photographer, cool guy all around, based out of New York and LA, right? Uh -huh. Mostly New York. Yep. I'm gonna shake your hand as if this is the first time we're meeting for today, yeah. but <laughs> we've actually been spending a couple hours together. It's been way too long in my opinion, which is why I'm glad we're on here to break it up. No, I'm just kidding. We're really nice He's guy. putting up with me. <laughs> so, uh, so we're here today because uh, we wanted to show something. You, this is kind of an invention of yours. Yeah. Um, and I, I kind of, I'm going to let you tell the story because okay. I, like, I like the origin of the story of okay. why this came about. I think it's really good. Sure. So I, I have a studio in New York, mostly. Uh, I have a studio in LA too, but I, I'm, I'd say 80, 90 percent in New York. And I'm on the Not known for its large doors and no. places to get big things in and out of. Uh, freight uh, elevators, yeah. uh, 12th floor. Uh, <laughs> one of the freight elevators went down for a couple months. You know, <laughs> getting a 12 foot seamless is a whole nother story, getting that up there. <laughs> but getting a four by eight piece of plexiglass is really not, not an easy task. So what happened was I, you know, I would go down the street, get the four by eight with an assistant or something and try and figure out how to lug it to the, to the studio and then get to the freight elevator and hope it fit. And I discovered that, you know, or I thought about it, I was like, what if we could roll it up? What if we just roll it up? Mm -hmm. Why can't you roll up? Why can't you roll it up? Yeah. You know, why can't that happen? So I didn't find any products out there like that. Yeah. So I just, I started this company called Hurley Pro and it's everything that I, that over the course of the ten, my 10 year career in studio, I can think of the things that bug me. If you have things that bug you in studio, let me know and we'll see if we can make <laughs> some stuff. Well, you know? that, but I mean, that's perfect because that's, that's kind of the idea behind so many, I think of the, the popular things that come out lately, is it's stuff that people have problems with every single day. Yeah. Stuff you're doing over and over again. I mean, just shipping plexiglass. Forget that's it. It, it costs it costs two to three times the amount to ship it as it does to actually buy to the buy stuff. It. Yeah. Yeah. Real real quick before we, we get too far into it. Um, so just for people that are just starting out out there, um, you, you'd use something like this when you want to get more of a reflection yeah. rather than just having white seamless, which is going to be flat. You can get a little bit of a reflection off of this. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Which I like to do when I'm shooting. I mean, I shoot a white seamless every day when I do my headshots, but a lot of times I pull back. I do a full body and I want to get that little reflection mm -hmm. under their feet and give it some, 
some atmosphere depth. and it gives you some yeah. depth and gets you, you know, so so I started messing with this product and it simply, it rolls up and fits in there and off you go. It's lightweight. I've got one in here now to show you. So it's, you know, I lift it up like this. I threw it on a plane. It wasn't a problem. Um, you can, it is. you can bash it around. Cool. Now you gotta you gotta show them. Are you gonna show them? The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, the to... other thing is okay. So um, here. So when I when you get that, do you guys who've gotten plexiglass before? It usually comes with a coating on it that's really difficult to get off. So I'm gonna takes have like a, an hour and a half to get it, it off. It's right? a pain in the butt. Anyway, so I just I just love this. Have Matt stand there for me. You got it. Okay. Here we go. Anybody that has shebang. <laughs> anybody that has Plexi glass. Look at that. Just said, How holy doing? crap. Wow. There we go. So now I got nice shine. I got a I got a surface I can use. Um, Cleans easily with yeah. one of those magic eraser things. So really how much nice. how much is one gonna? We're retailing these for 148. I like the 148. So That's a good number. Eight. Yeah, we're gonna stick with 148. Instead of 149, yeah. it's 148. And a, yeah. a pizza, a pizza, a piece of plexi costs piece four of by plexi, eight. Piece of plexi for me to get a four by eight piece of plexi of that that size, just white. We have black on this side too. If you want to use black, um, so if you want to use some matte and black, and obviously you're gonna have to keep it keep it kind of nice because it's gonna get scuffed up because it's on the bottom of the yeah. white, but you could use it as black, um, is 120 in New York City. Yeah. So I figured I got a bag, I got two options, I roll it up, you could take it with you, it doesn't break. My plexiglass is all broken from moving it around the studio. Yeah. And it's there awesome, you go. Man. I like it. And yeah. you've got a you've got a couple other ideas I'm sure we'll share. We'll share one of these days. You were kind of giving me a preview to. But yeah. um, where can people find out more about you, all this stuff? PeterHurley.com is my base site. People can go there and find other things. Uh, the site that we're building for this is HurleyProGear.com. And I also have a photographer's site called PH2Pro.com where you can go sign up for free and get a uh, gallery and you have, a, you have a DVD out too, don't you? I do. Which I've seen it, so I know that. Yeah. I, I ask you that as if, you know, yeah. I'm wondering if you do, but I've How watched it. Like it. It's awesome. All man. right, there we it's go. Awesome. You've got, it's awesome. Uh, it's, it's basically it was the art of the headshot, right? The art behind the headshot, yeah. I called it, and I did it with the F Stoppers guys, um, and you can buy it on my site. Sweet. All right, so check this out. I'm excited because you, cause you know why I'm really excited? Because he left. A piece of it for us too, so that'll be really cool to to get to try out. Yeah, I want to hear how you guys like it. Te so a little bit about um, you know, I figured maybe a tip for a beginner that might just be starting out with something like this. Is there anything anything to watch out for? Because you've got lights around. Is it going to reflect lights? Just you know, something out there for somebody who may not be familiar with using some of this. I think you just have to fiddle with the way the lighting's falling on it, and you know. Like I say all the time, is I used to start out with film with Polaroids. I used to take Polaroids. It's digital now. I learned all trial and error. I never took a photography class in my life, mm -hmm. um, except for in high school, I guess. Yeah. But, um, but you know, trial and error. Get this. Get something like this in your studio and look at the reflection and see how you're lighting it. And if you really want to pop that reflection, you got to tweak the lights until and see how much light's falling on and see what yeah. you get to get that nice. Reflection underneath. How far back are you usually putting it? Like, you know, if you've got your white seamless here, are you are you putting it right against the no, curve of the seamless? No, or are you I'm about it up? eight feet forward from the curve uh, in my New York studio. I mean, if you have a lot of space, you can get a little further forward, and then I have V flats on the side to block block any straight yeah. light hitting the background, and it's about eight to ten feet forward. Do you find you usually have to clone out a line? Not with this the, stuff, because it's stuff. so close to the ground. It it's, just blows it right out in. because yeah. it's so reflective. It's nice. It just you know. Awesome. But you can sometimes you, you you can if you have to. I mean, cool. it really depends how you light it and how much, how the lights falling on your subject and on this. And you just have to watch out for that. Yeah. And it's just about moving them. Move your lights around. Take a shot. Look at it. See what it's doing. See what you're getting in the highlights on the board and stuff like that. And then move it around. Awesome. Check this guy's website out. Awesome stuff. Awesome instructor. You'll love him. Peter Hurley, thanks for coming by. Man. Thanks, man. Appreciate thanks for it. having me. So, so if you were wondering where the shebang was coming from, that's where it's coming from. Mr. Peter Hurley, the man with the shebang. Yeah, that's Headshot kind of uh, New York. His, uh, his trademark thing. Yeah. It's like Clint Eastwood, go ahead, make my day. Shebang is his. Peter Hurley. Shebang. Phenomenal instructor. Phenomenal instructor. But let's go ahead and do this. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, I've got a website I want you to take a look at. We've got our prize as well as some special news. Special. Take a look. Special.
Welcome back to D-Town TV, the free show for DSLR shooters. My name is RC. I'm here with Scott. Howdy. And hey. we've got a website for them to watch. We do. Let's go ahead and take a look at this website. You've been on here a couple times. So have you. That's right, photoextract.com. This is a great place, and this is something that started uh, Jarek, actually Kilmec, is it? Yep. Started this website to kind of aggregate some of the best things that he's seen on Google+. Plus. Yeah. Google Plus has a great community of photographers. You're on Google Plus, I'm oh, on yeah. Google Plus, some of the world's best photographers are on Google Plus as well. And what Jarek did was he started going through all of this stuff and started creating some individual posts, but then also went in and started capturing like daily Right, he'd say like the photography, the best twelve shots on Google Plus today, or the you know the best ten, the best nine. It was different every day. Yeah, so it's like so. There's some stuff in here that that is just great, just wonderful. Like this is best black and white shots. Right, and these are different people that have posted, and he's found them on there. So he kind of looks at a lot of people's streams uh, on Google Plus, highlights the best ones. Oh, look at that. That is France. Yes, France. But it's great. It's just great curation, great work. I, I think it's something that if you want to look at it for inspiration, this is a good spot for you it's to go It's terrific. To. Now, uh, prizes. On One Software has been gracious enough to give us a copy of Focal Point. Focal Point is a great software for you to kind of create depth of field if you're not using, if you're using Photoshop CS5, CS4, and things like that. It's a great place for you to do that. So if you want to win this, what you want to do is you want to go to kelbytv.com forward slash dtowntv. Find this episode inside of the comments all you have to do is just put in your name your email and tell us what you like about the show what you don't like any kind of feedback um that's where you wouldn't want to leave it you could be watching this from anywhere right from anywhere YouTube, blip google plus facebook but we could only pick from one spot that's the spot that we chose now uh that pretty much wraps it up oh special wait news. a minute no, special no, no. news no well a couple more things i okay. wanted to do because it will come up guys if you want to take a look at that portfolio that we were showing for scott make sure that you go to scottkelby.com right here at the very very top you see that there's a section right here it says portfolio that's what you want to click on that's going to bring you to this customized portfolio that was made by our friends over at smug mug yeah i just switched to smug mug and i'm very very happy um you know, you know how i switched it was it's funny i was on the web and i saw a free 14 day trial i thought hey i'll try that. okay and uh, i did that and then i switched to a, a full paying account and uh then they, uh, you can ask to uh, have a custom design. Mm -hmm. So they, they let me do a custom design. They, I looked at all different uh, like templates and stuff and said, okay, I kind of want it like this. And they you built an actual it. actual customizer come right. in and But what's kind of cool is you still use the regular Smug Mug default look. So I, if I want to change a picture, I go up there and I see what Smug Mug looks like for everybody, the default one. I change the picture and but it looks like that. It kind of right. applies And this looks that. slick. And this looks really, and it's not flash. So we know that we can use it on yeah. mobile devices. So yeah. I think that that's pretty It works neat. on iPads and stuff, yeah, so I've tested it. Make sure you take a look at it over at smugmug.com. Now, for the news. Big news. All right, this has been a very, very beefy show because beefy. it is actually the last show for D-Town. <gasps> I know. No I more D-Town? I know, no more D-Town. So you won't have a show anymore? I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I just said we were going to do D-Town. Talk to us a little bit about the origin of D-Town. Okay, so D-Town was actually, when we launched the show, it was Matt Kleskowski and I originally, and, and we launched it, and it was the same format, same everything, uh, not as nice a set as this one, but it was, a, right. a, but, uh, it was called D-Town because the original launch of it was for Nikon only. Mm -hmm. So everything we thought D-Town worked great because Nikon cameras are D40, D50, D90, D3, D200, mm -hmm. D300. It was perfect. D-Town. This is where you learn about the D stuff. But then in our second season, we decided to expand it, include uh, other camera manufacturers, not just. I mean, obviously, you showed a Sony today, and we do Canon and all that kind of stuff. So it expanded out of there. And at this point, we kind of looked back and said, you know, at this point, we're doing such a wide range of photography stuff. You got Peter Hurley on here and special guests all the time and all. It's the name D Town, it just doesn't fit anymore. Because what the show is really about is photography tips and tricks, and it's that doesn't come across in just seeing the word D Town. Right. So, in an effort to get more people in, RC, use your name, right? You came up with the name? Yeah, yeah. I came figured. up with the name. It's, and this name is very unusual. <laughs> it is. Photography tips and tricks. All right. So, although this is the end of this season, the That's new right. season starts when? A uh, new season is going to be in about, I'm guessing, maybe five weeks, Four, six five weeks, weeks, I yeah. think it is. It's uh, some set changes. We'll go ahead and take down some detail signs, and we're going to call it Photography Tips and Tips, Photography TNT. It's going to be straightforward. Photography right? TNT. Are they going to have a graphic where things explode? Oh, no. I don't know, but it was... 
But is, is September 27th is going to be the launch date of the new show. But tell your friends, make sure that you keep it in mind. D Town is now going to be photography tips and tricks. Yeah, so make sure you tune into that. You're going to really, really like what we're doing. You'll still have a place to go and see RC. Absolutely. And Scott. And, and me. Matt. And Matt. We'll all and be Pete, on here. And And Larry. And everybody else from Kelvin Media Group. But guys, so far, thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for telling everybody. Thank you so much for advising, right? This is your show. We're just here making sure that we talk to you guys about the things that you want to see the most of. Hopefully, we can do more of that next season. Take a look. See you Take guys care, later. Bye-bye. We'll